Welcome to episode three of So You Want to Be a Commercial Fisherman. Now we're coming to you from a very serious location here because what we're going to talk about today is very serious. Episode three is called Taking Care of Your Body and we're going to tell you everything you need to know to take care of your body. Now you do not want to end up like our good friend Gil Netter. It's no secret that commercial fishing is hard work. It's vital that you take care of yourself and keep going so that at the end of the season you'll be healthy enough to fight the other fishermen over the lady in Accutan if she still lives there. We're gonna give you some tips on how to stay healthy. There's about a 100% chance that you are going to experience one of these ailments that we discussed today. And remember, we don't give very good advice. Seasickness is the leading cause of being sick at sea. Symptoms of seasickness include puking in your area, puking in someone else's area, puke farting, puke sh**, nausea, painful urination, and unplanned pregnancy. Even experienced fishermen get seasick. Using our advice can minimize or even eliminate some of the symptoms. The most common symptom of seasickness is puking. Believe it or not, but our experience has taught us a cure for puking. You can 100% eliminate your chances of puking by not eating. Imagine how much more you will get done on deck when you aren't puking. Now puke farting, that varies with age. Now research indicates that younger fishermen have an increased risk of puke farting while older fishermen are more susceptible to puke shit. Now nausea, that's a little harder to cure, but we have a way to mitigate it. We found that you can minimize your chances of being nauseous from seasickness by staying nauseous from a hangover. The last two symptoms may be related. All we're gonna tell you is wear your rain gear. Taking care of your hands and your feet are the next important topic we're gonna cover. Now you see, out in the field, out in the water, we got this saying, and it'll help you remember to take care of your hands and your feet. It goes like this. You can't beat your meat in the street if you don't take care of your hands and your feet. Woohoo! Yeah, now that one will help you remember to take care of your hands and your feet. David Jimmy told me that one. I've remembered it ever since. Now, we are not advocating anyone beat their meat in the street, all right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We're just giving you a little saying that, you know, will help you remember to take care of your hands and your feet. Now, let's talk about hands. The hands are the little flat pieces at the end of each arm, and they got little fingers on them. Now you want to treat your hands and your feet well. And the best way to do that is by getting manicures. Now, if you don't have access to a manicure when you're out on the water, which not all boats have this on board, mm. you go ahead and you get yourself some of that petroleum-based goop, right, or uh, the, the cow nipples. Oh, mm -hmm. And you put that goop on your hands and then you put that into the glove. Just you just like that, yeah. yes. And and then you go like this, uh -huh. and it's in, and then like this, and then you put your gloves on. It takes care of your hands. They will be fresh as daisies. Believe it. Okay. Well, on to foot care. One of the leading causes of foot injuries, believe it or not, is car accidents. So what you want to do is minimize the time spent in a car while you're on a boat. Now we have a saying also to help you remember to take care of your feet. And it goes like this. 
If you see something heavy falling from the air, don't put your foot there. <laughs> I know. Yep. It's amazing how many people who are new to fishing have not recited these things. I know. And they end up with injured hands and smashed feet. I see it all the time, the new guys mm -hmm. coming in there, the greenhorns. Now back injuries account for 100% of all back related injuries on a boat. To minimize the risk of hurting your back, we've developed a three step process and it will help you reduce the risk of back injury. First, if an object to be picked up is heavy and the potential exists for a back injury, you have to ask yourself, is there anyone else you can get to pick it up? Now we found it easier to convince the greenhorn to pick it up. And you can do that by saying motivational things. We've developed a few things that you can say to aid in getting, you know, this ball, ball rolling here. Things like, um, hey, you piece of greenhorn, get over here, pick that thing up before I kick your ass. <laughs> you know, that's one that that's, works. That works. You, know? mm -hmm. um, you stinky hole, get that pick it up, pick up the thing, pick up the thing, you That's another good one. Mm -hmm. It really, I find it find, motivates the greenhorn to pick things up and mm -hmm. put them where they belong, reducing the back injury for yourself. And, and I've, I've, you know, grabbed the greenhorn's arm and shoved it into the bait grinder a little bit. I mean, just as a joke, I wasn't, you know. But was it effective? Yeah, he, it, he, he did what I asked of him. And that's exactly what we're talking about, folks. Now, if the thing is too heavy to be picked up and the greenhorn still hasn't picked it up, we're gonna utilize step two to make sure your back doesn't get injured. This tool is only useful during a pandemic, so at the moment it's pretty useful. Now Daryl, what we gotta do is pick this up and move it. So um, hang on one second. Now, because of COVID-19, we can't maintain proper social distancing with this because it's not six feet so i'm going to need you to go ahead and and pick it up yourself all right it goes like this if you don't <laughs> if you see something falling if you see something, <laughs> don't look at me like that. Green horn with bodily harm. <laughs> Make. Stupid <laughs> Dollar General. A Dollar General tape. <laughs> That's what happens. You buy tape at the 99 cent store. Yeah.